crew needed for a large FTL spaceship I want to rough out the crew needed for a large FTL spaceship which is on a survey mission, my basic scenario is my CIV is recovering from a dark age and is exploring its surroundings using ex-military carriers, the spaceship has autonomous FTL equipped message drones, autonomous in system drones, some equipped for entering and leaving a planetary atmosphere, 10 manned unarmed in system ships that are able to land on a planet or moon, 2 manned armed FTL capable ships, with minimal survey equipment, their primary purpose is to defend the carrier. My question is, how many crew will it require? At present, I have the following shifts X people, 3x10 operational bridge crew who handle the ship, 3x10 power crew engine room, power plants etc. 3x10 IT crew maintain computing services, provide analysis of data gathered 1x100 marines a 100-person unit able to provide military support 1x5 squadron crew oversee the drones and parasite ships and the crews 1x60 the 12 parasite Site ships crews, 3 by 5 science team, help analyze survey data, 3 by 10 parasite ships maintenance staff, 3 by 10 drone maintenance staff, 3 by 10 environmental crew, maintain, recycle, air, water, food, sewage, rubbish, 3 by 20 farm crew, grow fresh food for the crew, 3 by 25 support crew, people who run the various spaces, e.g. cooks, waitresses, cleaners, 3 by 5 medical staff, doctors, nurses, lab techs, 3 by 25 hotel staff. Staff, run the accommodation, do the laundry, etc. 3 by 10 security team, internal police. Also, what departments have I missed? If the mission is multi-year, which I think it would be, should I include childcare and schools? Cheers, Steve. Whether or not you end up with more or less crew, there are some fundamental failings in this list in terms of how the labor is distributed. I'll go through the basics to give you an idea of how to better distribute crew across the functions. Every marine is a rifleman. This is becoming a controversial saying in the modern world as focus shifts to other forms of combat techniques than the old school trench warfare, but for the purposes of your carrier, I'd recommend you take it to heart. Having 100 X marines on board your ship doing nothing until you get to a planet on which you want them to land is a terrible waste of resources. I'd argue that they are your cooks, environmental staff, cleaners and launderers, and for Pete's sake, you really don't need waitresses until they're needed for combat. They spend a part of their week remaining combat ready, and for the rest of it you put them to work. Air, food, and space on board any spaceship is going to be precious, and you're not going to bring people who have a single function. Everyone on board your ship will have a secondary skill and will be able to back someone else up. That is just the way of it. In the case of combat specialists, they won't just be sitting idle on your ship until they're needed, and when they are, other people can fill the gaps while they're away. After all, less to clean, launder, fix, feed, etc. Night shifts. While bringing redundant skill sets for critical functions like the engine room is laudable, you won't bring enough for three full shifts. You'll have a primary shift that will operate during the ship's day hours, and then a small skeleton crew for the other two shifts that monitor things, fix the really simple problems, and have at their core the most important function of all, wake up the day crew if something goes really wrong. The same will be true of your maintenance teams, the night shifts will be there to sort out the easy stuff and make sure no one pinches the CPU out of a damaged drone to start up an in-ship quake server. The real problems will be sorted out by a primary shift, and everyone else is going to be caretakers, pure and simple. Smaller bridge. I can't help but notice you put the same number of people on the bridge as you have maintaining the engines, the IT systems and the boats and drones on board the carrier. That IMHO is way too many. I'd argue that you may need that size for an officer corps, acting as department heads for the other functions on board your ship, but certainly not all directly on the bridge. Let's face it, the bridge isn't where it's happening in any event. Effectively, the bridge is there to point the ship in the right direction and get out of the way of things that won't move because you're bearing down on them. Most of that, given how many IT people you have, should be automated after the initial programming by a much smaller bridge crew. But, I'm going to assume that you didn't mean bridge explicitly and that you were referring to the command staff. If so, then that makes sense but you're, again, not going to need 3x shifts worth. You might have more than 10, but a small complement of them are going to have the sole function of waking up the primaries in case of trouble. Military police. If you have around 600 crew on board your ship, all intent on serving a specific mission, and you need 30 cops with you to keep the peace and the law on board your ship, then I deeply suspect your captain isn't a good judge of character. 
You already have some Marines assigned to day jobs on the ship in flight, put a couple on to investigating stuff when it arises, and your captain is judge and jury which I think you'll find is close to the truth on a modern military vessel in any event. Science team. You call this a survey mission, but you bring 100 soldiers, 90 ship crew and maintenance, and only 15 scientists. That's not a survey mission, it's a reconnaissance mission. If you're serious about this being a survey mission, you'll have a lot more scientists on board, or a lot less of everyone else. In essence if you need 600 people to carry about 15 scientists and it's a scientific mission, you're doing it wrong. Very wrong. The main reason I don't think you're wrong about the IT staff count is that they'll be split across two priorities. Keeping the ship running, and keeping the scientists running. As such, you'll find that members of the science team will accompany every away mission or landing, and you'll have specialists in xenobiology, geology, chemistry, physics, etc. on board your ship ready to analyze whatever findings they come across. Arguably, they would also make good cleaners, cooks, etc. when you are traveling between worlds, although knowing academics as I do, good luck keeping them as organized or as focused as the Marines, especially if they haven't had anything published for a bit. But, I digress. Double ups. I'd make the point that the farming work is likely hydroponic, and that it does as much to maintain the atmosphere aboard the ship as any dedicated crew, so I'd argue that both functions would be tied into one set of jobs, not separate departments. Same with the engineers and the drone and ship maintenance teams, especially if space is at a premium on the ship already. To summarize, the less people you have on your ship, the better. Space is risky, and expensive. People are fragile and hard to keep alive out there, so the fewer you have on your ship the better for that reason. To that end, everyone has to have multiple reasons for being there and this is why the current list is so long, it doesn't take into account that many of the functions are part-time and therefore could be done by people who do other things when not needed for that function. Also, we have to remember that automation is now a thing and the fact that we have drones entering military use at a far greater rate than new fighters and combat aircraft should tell you that the ideal crew for your ship if it has good internal repair drones and brilliant programming may well be zero. In any event, segregating people so rigidly by function may not be the best idea because if you are trying to keep a crew to its minimum in space which is something you should always do then you really want generalists wherever possible, not specialists.